welcome to this week's Kamogi Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Kamogi TV, Tipperary Kamogi's official YouTube channel. Last Saturday was billed as a super Saturday of Kamogi and we certainly have two, we had two very highly entertaining games with the start of the Glen Dimplex all Iron Junior and Senior Championship. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the super results we were hoping for. Uh, our juniors lost out to Cavan on a final scoreline of 111 to 29. They led at half time 177 points. And uh, starting the second half, Cavan struck for two early goals. From here on in, Tip were brilliant. You know, they found themselves six points behind, but they made a great comeback, scoring five unanswered points, showed huge heart determination. Um, but unfortunately, the effort fell short. They did have a free late in the game um, from a difficult angle that uh, just went narrowly wide. And so, unfortunately, uh, heartbreakingly, lost by a point to Cavan on a final scoreline of 111 to 29. So they must dust themselves off now, pick themselves up. And a massive game this Saturday against Mayo. That game is in the Adrian Freeman Park in Torino, Mayo at 5 p.m. on Saturday. And remember, tickets must be purchased online, so you'll see links up uh, on social media. And so this is a huge game. You know, it's a must-win game if they are if they have um, any chance of making the knockout stages of the Glen Tipflix All Ireland Junior Championship. Um, there was some great performances all over the field. Um, last weekend, but unfortunately, I suppose wasn't consistent for the whole 60 minutes. And um, started, you know, got off to a slow enough start and uh, finished the half strong. And then, um, you know, just maybe lapse of concentration and started the second half, but then it put in a fantastic 20 minutes. I suppose we saw in the 20 minutes what they're capable of. Um, Claire Stakeham started out midfield with Amy Cross, they worked really well together. Kira Cummins put in a huge shift. Uh, Kira McHugh was very good at centre back. Grace Maloney um, looked really good in wing forward. So too with Didi from Lachny, you know, they led the charges up front. But um, unfortunately, you know, I suppose Cavan, a very good team as well, uh, led in the half back line by Rosie Crow McKeever and uh, Aideen Coyle. Um, midfield then, very strong. So too was the forwards, Carmel Faye there, corner forward was the injured woman, got, got a goal. Emer Brady, excellent at the other, in the other, for, in the other uh, corner. Shanice Fitzsimons was kept quiet from first half with Ashley Sheedy, but she kind of came out deeper in the second half and uh, uh, was um, instrumental in the two goals that uh, Cavan got. That really was the difference on the day. Um, after the game, I spoke to Tipperary junior manager Ray Delaney and Cavan manager Phil Brady to get their reaction. Now by Ray Delaney, the Tipperary junior manager. Ray, it's itched all over your face, disappointed after that result. I'm very disappointed, Jerry. Yeah. Um, look, the girls went out in their shields, in fairness, slow start of the second half and a little bit of a slow start of the first and just got a bit of a run. But like that's that's Camogie, that's it. But look, the positive is there's still three games to go on this people are going to beat each other we have to just go ahead and take care of business now we had a lot of injuries coming into today um, different things happened and things like that but look can't put any can't knock any of the 20 odd girls that were there available today they gave it everything and just came up a little bit short but that mightn't happen the next day you know and in fairness you know everyone could see it here the work rate and the attitude there in the second half they absolutely died in their boots there Look, that's the one thing when we took over this year was the one thing we wanted to implement that girls were going to work hard, do the best they could, and everything like that. And that was very, very evident today. Like you know, with a couple of minutes to go, it only looked like there was only one team in it, and we had our chances. Like you know, with a couple of bad wides towards the end, and these things happen. But like, there's no blame, there's no fault at anyone. This is Camogie at the end of the day. But like, you have to put yourselves in them positions to get the best out of them, and the girls did, and they did do that. Like you know, so I can't knock them. I think we had a couple of bad wides as well in the first half as well. So these things all matter when it comes down to championship hurling the small margins and just unfortunately today we're on the end of a one point loss but like I won't mind meeting them again if we have to you know that sort of way yeah no I suppose next weekend you have to travel to Mayo you know it's win a must is a win is a must here from here on in oh look we, there's three games left we must win all three games to qualify for an all Ireland semi-final it'll all come down to like you know nothing else other than who's going to win the next three games and that's still in our hands there's not a minute poked of any game left and I can guarantee you one thing there's one thing we have with them girls is the, a desire and a heart and they won't be found wanting and like a couple of more girls will be back during the week and they're like you know that's that's been the big part of it like you know the injuries kind of were just a little bit girls had to step up and maybe into positions that they weren't kind of used that and things that put like there was none of them found wanting. I can't knock the girls and every one of them, management included, absolutely brilliant today. They gave everything, but look, it isn't still in our own hands. We have to win the next three, and I don't mind playing any of the next three with the bunch of girls that we have. They're well capable of doing it, and they're only going to get better as this championship goes along. So it look, there's doom and gloom today, but it won't be for the next couple of weeks, please God. 
And your gift starts to uh, minors, Grace Maloney there in one wing, Kate Ferncombe the other wing. Um, I was very impressed with it. Two young players really uh, stood up to today. Look, that's what we came in under, like, you know, that we were always going to try and develop a panel to bring girls forward and things like that. Like, it's absolutely brilliant that, like, the minors got so close to winning in All-Ireland. Like, you know, you have them girls then that are ready to come up. And, like, they've been training with Bill. Young Lorna Ryan came in as a sub. Emma Horgan came in. Alison O'Mahony is just our minor last year. So, realistically, the future is very bright for Tipperary Camogie. It's nothing that we can't fix going forward over the next couple of weeks and they will add to it and that's it's absolutely brilliant to get the opportunity to give them game time today but at the same time now we must put the shoulder to the wheel regroup refresh go to Mayo next Saturday to get the result and bring it all down to Clare and Watford then for the last two games because we have to go and do the job we can't be taking this as let, like you know or we can't take the foot off the gas now it has to be just full belt from here on in and like there can be no mistakes from here and I don't think there will be the girls are absolutely brilliant I can't knock them and just a word on Kevin, I spoke to you during the week, you were expecting a big physical challenge, they're a good side and you know, were you impressed with them today? I'm very, very impressed with Kevin, their movement off the ball for the second goal was absolutely brilliant, they played it in a triangle and in fairness it was kind of very hard to defend against because of what they'd done, but like you can see that with Kevin for the last couple of years, I even looking back at videos last night of the league final of the one against Ross Common last year and won the league final against Wexford this year, who were the junior All-Ireland champions, we knew there was a battle coming here today, we knew it wasn't going to be any walk in the park, the days of Kevin and all these being minnows and Camogie they're well and truly gone, they're all at a level now there's high look at their warm up every night before the game it's absolutely fantastic to see for Camogie just unfortunate we're on the wrong end of the result today but look we'll see we'll regroup and we'll get going again thanks a million Ray for chatting to us and best luck next weekend thanks Charlie cheers now I'm joined by the cabin manager Philip Brady here uh, Philip you know you came down you got the business done you got your points and a great start to the championship for you yeah look we knew coming down this was going to be one of the toughest games probably the championship and we were probably very focused especially after the loss to Antrim in, in Ulster we felt that we could probably win it as well and you know we got back at the um, last two weeks and I wouldn't say it's a great performance but we worked very hard and um, you know we got the goals at the right time I suppose and again any day you come down to Tipperary you know it's for us in Cavan you know Tipperary is one of the best teams in the country and one of the best counties for Camogie in the country and look I suppose all our lives we've been looking up to the likes of the Tips Kilkenny's and that and now to be down here playing this is um, it's unbelievable and to come away with a victory it's something special and um, I thought you settled better of the two teams and you know dominated for a lot of the first half and probably were unlucky to go behind with the tip goal yeah we were I think we gave the goal away and we probably missed a couple of chances early on I think they, they dropped into the goalie's hands or we had one or two wides and again probably a bit of nerves like as I say coming down to a, a county like Tipperary for Cav and Camogie it's you know we're on a different level this year I suppose winning the National League final against Wexford and, and now playing Tipperary it's just unheard of you know we're back playing Camogie probably three years as a county and um, they haven't been a Camogie team in Cavan probably ten years so uh, again to be coming down here and getting a victory it's, as I say special you know that's huge and fair play and you can see the professionalism of the set up um, right from the start here you know you you know I personally feel you have a serious say in this group and in this championship yeah as I say we um, we had a couple of people don't really know much about Cavan or, or give us a chance um, this group is a small bit different uh, they're putting in a lot of effort and you know they won division three and won division four last year and they're, they're sort of on up on a bit of a roll and look we're we're probably not where we want to be but we're getting the victories at the minute and that's what counts and tactically I thought you got right in the second half you know um, got your two goals and then you know defended brilliantly from there on in it was, that wasn't tactics <laughs> that was just pure chance and as I say tipped the last couple of minutes were, were brilliant and they moved all over the place and they were very fast and especially the subs that come on I thought done a good job but um, we just uh, Look, we work hard and that's the main thing. We got the goals today. I'm a bit disappointed. I don't think we scored the last 15 minutes, so something we need to work on. And next up for Tip is away to Mayo for Cavan? We're at home to Waterford next Saturday. So Again, we don't know much about Waterford. We didn't know much about Tip. We concentrate probably on our own game and our own performance. We look back on this and see where we can improve and hopefully we'll get another win and, and continue on our way. Brilliant stuff. Thanks very much. Second game on Saturday then was of course the meeting of Tipperary and Clare in the Glen Olympics All Ireland Senior Championship. It was the third time these uh, sides met in the last four weeks, having met uh, twice in the Munster Championship. First game was a draw, and then Clare won the replay. So um, everyone was really looking forward to this battle, and it was a really intriguing battle between two teams. I suppose they know each other so well. It was a low-scoring affair, and Tip probably started the library of the two teams. Um, 
you know, caught the fan, looked very uh, good up front. Uh, Grace O'Brien, Queen Ma were excellent in the middle of the field. And uh, we led a half time, five points to three. Um, in the second half, then, um, uh, Anya Saturday was called upon to make a save from a penalty, an excellent save. Um, and look, it was nip and tuck then from here on in the game, ebbed and flowed. Um, like I said, really tight mark. And Mary Ryan was excellent, the full mark, a uh, full back mark on Anya Lachlan. So too was Julianne Burke and Emer Lufman in the corners. Um, unfortunately, Cueve McCarthy picked up an injury early in the first half, had to come off injured and wish her a speedy recovery. Mary Levison came on for her first um, appearance this year, did very well. Um, our forwards, like Nicole Walsh, Claude McIntyre, all out in front, winning that spot. But I suppose the final um, shoot maybe let us down a bit. Um, that's probably due to the great pressure that Claire put, under, put our forwards under. Like Sequiva Kelly, Chloe Mori, Aoife Keen, all very good for Claire. Um, and our forwards were under fierce pressure striking. You know, they were swarmed by Claire players. And look, we hit, I think, 11 wides and a number of shots dropped short as well, which I suppose was disappointing. Um, but it was 10 points all, I suppose, with time just up. We got um, a late free, huge drama. Um, Ian McGrath hit the free from just outside midfield. As the ball was dropping in, the referee blew up the final whistle. Um, very bizarre. Um, never seen the likes of it before. Um, and as he was, as the whistle was blown, caught, caught the ball and buried it into the back of the net. Uh, so it could have been a famous uh, victory for Tipperary, but instead the game finished all square, 10 points all. And the referee had the final whistle blown. It was a strange decision um, to give the free at all if he was going to blow it while the ball was in midair. But look, that's sport. And... Um, Again, like juniors, we have to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves down, be happy with the with the draw, but know that there's uh, huge work to be done now in the next few weeks. Um, Dublin, this weekend, this Saturday in Parnell Park at one o'clock, it's going to be a massive, massive uh, game. Dublin are after beating um, Waterford in their first round, so that was a huge win for Dublin in the first round. I think that game finished 111 to 12, so a close game, but a vital win for Dublin um, as they'd be looking to grab one of the top three spots to get out of the group. Um, just like Tip, Clare, Wickford uh, and Cork, obviously. Um, so, um, and Warford, obviously, yeah. Uh, so next up, like I said, is Tip in Dublin this Saturday in Parnell Park at 1 o'clock. Again, advanced ticket sales only. We'll post uh, the, the links online. Let's get behind the girls again. Let's travel to Mayo or travel to Dublin. You choose, pick one of them, but go and support one of our Tipperary adult teams this Saturday. Uh, if we can. After the senior match, I spoke to Keir de Mar, who had a very good game at wing back, and also Bill Milani to get their reaction. Uh, we're joined by a wing back, Keir de Mar. Keir de, a uh, very tough game there, ended all square. What are your thoughts on the match? Yeah, it was a really tough battle. Um, um, it's good to see that we were able to put it up to Clare this, um, this week. We obviously struggled for the last two weeks so all we wanted to do was come out today and give a good performance and obviously we wanted to win the match but it was delighted to see that we came out and we were able to perform for the 60 minutes and I know it was um, a draw after full time but I feel like we kept it up to them and we were well able to we could have even went on and win the, won the match. Yeah I suppose Tiberi or people were looking for a response would have felt maybe the last two games you know credit cleared or obviously excellent but we're a bit flat you seem to have more energy um, do you know obviously refocused last weekend after the defeat yeah I feel like um, for the past two weeks we've really settled into training and we've really pushed ourselves with the intensity and um, we obviously have a few new players after coming into the panel which is after driving us on a good bit there's a lot more competition for places and stuff for the last two weeks and we definitely have upped our intensity so we were just delighted to get out there today and give a performance and kind of show people what we can do that we're not I'd say people probably put us down after the last two performances but um, we kind of showed people today that we are up for this and we are in contention to win this championship. And um, a new position for you this year wing back we would have seen you before in the forwards how are you finding it you had a great game there today? Um, it's definitely different I'm still learning lots but um, the lads have been really good they've um, brought me and Cueva McCarthy back through it and they've gone you know, um, through plays and stuff so we're kind of getting the hang of it now um, I know we're probably missing a few who've been playing in those positions and they're starting to come back 
again, it was great to see Murray back in today after um, a bad injury for the last few weeks. So, yeah, it's grand. I'm get, getting used to it, but, um, uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's great. And what's it like playing, I suppose, alongside your sister, Cueva? Had a very good game there in the middle of the field. Yeah, it was great to have Cueva back today. Um, I suppose we're used to playing with each other for the last um, long time, really. So um, it was great to just to have trust and know people around you. I know, I feel like for the last two matches, we kind of had new players playing in new positions. We weren't all used to playing together, but we kind of settled back into the game today, and that was good to see. And I suppose we have to mention the drama at the end, um, a, a free from distance from Eamon McGrath. The, the whistle was gone, we, I suppose we all heard the whistle blow just before uh, Cork got it and put it in the back of the net. How did you feel, what did you feel of that decision? Um, it was frustrating I suppose, like they could, like most referees will let the game or the play play out and see what happens. It was interesting to see that he did blow the ball up when the ball was nearly in the air. Um, if he was going to blow it up, he could have blown it up when we won the free or told Emer at least it was the last puck of the ball. But um, we weren't informed in that, not to my knowledge anyway, so it would have been nice to play out. But even if it didn't go our way, and I know Caught ended up putting it in the back of the net, but um, it would have been good to just play out the play. And I suppose it would have been a dream finish, but it wasn't to be. But look, I think, um, you know, judging by yourself, happy enough with the draw here and uh, we'll build on this and travel to Dublin now next weekend. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're happy to come out with a point at least. Um, it's a good, we've performed well, I think, so it was a good start to our championship. We just have to go to Abbottstown next weekend and perform again and make sure we come out with our three points next weekend. Thanks very much, Kirda. Joined now by Bill Milani, very senior manager. Bill, I suppose the feeling is you don't know whether to say hard luck or well done. Uh, I suppose, yeah, somewhere in, in between. But look, it was a savage performance by our, 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 our team there all throughout the game, you know. I mean, it was hard work, um, you know, but the backs were brilliant, the goalie was brilliant. Like, we worked hard up and down the field. We were unlucky not to get a couple of more frees, unlucky with a couple of breaks in the game, you know. Um, but, hey, look, I couldn't be more proud of them today, like, you know. Um, we had a cup, tough couple of matches, as you know, against uh, Clare. We were beaten by him already, so it was great. It feels, it feels like, you know, a small bit of justice, but I thought we were the better team at the same time. And unlucky looking to come out on the right side, you know. Yeah, I definitely thought it was a big improvement, I suppose, on the performance the last day against Clare. And you can see right from the start, it was better movement and more energy around. And um, well, I suppose the Clare defence, they're so good and the scores are hard to come by. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, you see, like, it's a draw. So both defences were on top, you could say. Like, you know, I, uh, the Clare defence is always going to be hard, always going to be tough and you wear in every score. And um, same with the tip, back, tip backs, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know... Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, Mal, uh, Ethan McGrath, Jez, Julie, the whole lot you go there, Mal Sigmund, Keir the Mayor, you know, and um, Ray Everson coming back in today, first match in a long time. Like, do you know, I mean, like we held them out as much as they held us out too, you know. And uh, I just thought for a couple of decisions there in the, in the, in the, when we were in their half, I thought went against us when I thought we should have got something for it, you know. Yeah, and I suppose with a couple of talking points, I suppose the first was the fantastic save by Anya Slattery for the penalty. Yeah, I don't even know why it was a penalty, to be honest. Uh, I thought the girls stood the ground. Uh, you know, they spread their arms. They didn't uh, They didn't engage, really. Uh, she was running at them, but it was a great save by Anya. And the follow-up out of it was uh, was brilliant as well. The next ball out was absolutely fabulous. You know, I thought in general she was brilliant today, you know. Yeah. Our subs come on, did well. Emer and Irina both got points. Ah, just like, I mean, uh, Emer McGrath is a savage player, as you know, for drum. Like, I mean, the point she got was unreal. Uh, um, you know, she added energy to it as well. And when Arena came on, again, more energy and got a great point. But look, that's, the, that's, that's what panels are for too. Like, they probably feel that, um, you know, I should be starting. And so they put their hand up for the next day now. So we have, you know, more hard decisions. I thought all the subs that came on did, did great. So Mairead was on and we forget that she was on from the first half. Like, you know, yeah. so, so she had a tremendous game as well. And I suppose huge drama there at the end. A long distance free for Eamon McGrath was dropping short into the danger area and suddenly the full-time whistle was blown. While Kosh was putting the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, I look, I, I, I can't fathom that at all. I, I mean, I, I'm no Einstein or anything like that, but I wouldn't be able to figure it out. I, I just never heard of it. Um, look, he made the call. That's it. We have to live by it. The result won't change because of it. I thought it was harsh. Yeah, and it would have been a dream finish if it had, if it goal had been allowed. It would have been unreal. It would have been unreal. I thought it would even. I was expecting actually Emma McGrath to put the ball over the bar from that far out. She has that range. Maybe the wind held it up. Perfect for caught. Great strike. And um, unfortunately, he um, he blew the whistle for for whatever reason. And I suppose no time to rest on the laurels. Uh, next weekend, you travel to Dublin. Um, they're going to be a tricky opponent. Yeah, always are. I mean, um, you know, we'll have to be, again, we'll have to put in the same performance as we did today. We'll really have to fight hard against Dublin. They're a very strong, tough, physical team, which we know. Um, and, you know, they'll, 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 they'll want the points as much to win at home as well, you know. Thanks very much, Bill. Oh, thanks a million to Ray, Philip, uh, Kira, and Bill for taking the time to talk to the Mobile Report podcast after last, last Saturday's games. Um, 
Also, last weekend, we had the Senior League final between uh, Anna Carty and Drummond Inch. That ended a draw. Really good game again. Uh, finished 18 points to 212. So the replay has happened this Sunday at half six in the County Community Grounds. All this week, we have the under-16 county finals, and we'll give you a rundown of all them results next weekend. The under-21 championship is, is uh, underway. Lots of action in under-12s, under-14. So loads of games uh, happening. Um, so get out and support your club. Uh, so the big one again, obviously, is the seniors and the juniors out in the Glendon Fix all Ireland Championship round two this weekend. Uh, Tip and Mayo in the junior on Saturday and Tip and Dublin in the senior on Saturday. Best of to both teams. Thanks for watching.